Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Let's see. Can Judy? Let me ping Judy. So, so I guess Judy is the only person we're waiting for. You know, I, I don't know how to apologize enough about this. I'm in the wrong role. <laughs> um, thank you for the call, Lucy, getting me in. And, um, I mean, I just was emailing with Judy, so I know she is available. Um, she might have given up, though. It's actually one of one of the advantages of um, of Zoom is that I can sit here at my computer doing stuff on my computer instead of being in the meeting room somewhere. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Thanks. Well, um, do we have quorum? I think we do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, let me just also text Johnny. Um, he might not have his phone, so I'm going to do one other thing and, and email him. Jim, just so you know, you're not the only one having issues with this new format. So it's, it's been a challenge. Well, um, thank you for your grace. I appreciate it. Um, but I am, I know I was told that because we have this evening meeting that I have to log in in the afternoon in case there's a passcode, you know, um, requested. And of course, the last two times there's been no passcode requested. And I just, I, I did not remember to do that again. And um, so here we go. But then Lucy calls me and says, look, we're all in. I just click and I click the link and I'm in. So the, the procedure for the host you know, it's like you go to the Zoom website and, and you put in Portola Valley's user ID and all this stuff. So it was very odd that I can get in with just the link. I didn't even think of clicking that. Well, the, 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 minute, the uh, email said 6.30, but the minute said seven. And the town website said 6.30 also. Right, yeah, I looked at the town website. That is my fault oh. also. <laughs> No problem. Yeah, as I say, I got a few more things done on the computer that I, that I would have had to do anyway, so. Thank you. Lucy, would you like to open us up? Um, let's call the meeting to order. Uh, first, let's do a roll call. Um, Lucy Neely? Here. Andrew Pierce? Here. Adnan Niftkar? Here. Kirsten Kingdon? Here. Judy Murphy, Cole, Kawaja, yeah. and my, my, yeah, my camera's not on right now, but yeah. Okay, and Johnny Clark here. Thank you. Uh, Lu Lucy, would you like to lead us in um, uh, opening um, gratitude? Oh, an icebreaker. Yeah, sure. I thought we we're going to do gratitude um, today, and I love yeah, it if you can lead us. Thanks. It's a little on the woo woo, touchy feely side, uh, but I think there's a place for that. So hopefully uh, we can do it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think part of, you know, justice and that whole endeavor is about transforming our consciousness. And I think that cultivating gratitude is a helpful thing for changing our own consciousness. And it's also a nice way to start a meeting and set a tone. So 
Yeah, maybe we could just do a, a lightning round. Uh, I could call on people to help it be efficient. And if folks just want to share something that they can conjure gratitude for in this moment. Um, I'm happy to start. Uh, I'm grateful for Georgia Lane, which is the street that goes the back way to Wormandale. Yeah. Um, or, you know, maybe if people are ready, they can call on themselves so I don't put you on the spot. I can go. I am grateful for Ayana, my uh, newly turned seven-year-old today. Ooh. Congrats. I'm grateful oh. we're having this meeting and that we're not having to reschedule. <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the beautiful weather, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the fog. And I can tell I've become a Californian because I used to hate the fog. <laughs> I'm grateful for my uh, uh, Black Jewish filmmaker daughter, Rebecca Pierce. Mm -hmm. Judy, your uh, mic is off. Uh, while my mic is on, uh, I'll be right back, but I'm grateful for um, this committee and what work we have accomplished here. I'll be right back. Judy, are you shaking? Are you shaking your head? You just can't think of anything you feel grateful for, or you can't get your mic on. <laughs> Seems like you can't get your mic on. Sorry. Maybe log in and log out. All right, Marianne or John, you want to throw one in for good measure? Sure. I was walking up Toyon and Oreo Trail today and thought, how could anybody be so lucky to live here? Mm. Yep, I, I found my I found it here. I was I was trying to touch my screen and it's not, and it's not a touch screen because <laughs> I work mostly on my iPad. <laughs> it's like I'm poking in the damn thing and it's not doing anything. I'm I'm so happy it's fall. I love fall. The days are just fabulous. You know, the fog in the morning and the warm afternoons. It's like, oh my God, are we lucky? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Last chance, Christy or Marianne? Marianne. I'm grateful for this committee because you are all really kind people and you're very respectful and nice to me and John. Thank you for that. By okay. contrast, perhaps with some other meetings you go to? Bingo. <laughs> yeah. That should be a whole committee unto itself, the kindness committee. Good. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Ice is broken. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with our land acknowledgement before we go into the agenda. The town of Portola Valley acknowledges the colonial history of this land we dwell upon, the unceded territory of the Muwekma Ohlone. Ramatush Ohlone and Tamian Nation, who endured a human and cultural genocide that include removal from their lands and disrupted their sacred relationship to the land. Portola Valley recognizes that we profit from the commodification of land seized from indigenous people and now bear the social and ecological consequences. We seek to understand the impact of these legacies on all beings and to find ways to make repair. All right, let's go into um, oral communications for items not on the agenda. The speaker's time is limited to two minutes.
No oral communications? Okay. Um, next, we have two um, minutes to approve. Let's start with June 30th, the special meeting. Are there any changes to the minutes? I'm sorry, Kim, you said June 30, but on our agenda, it's a July 12 and August 9. <laughs> Seems like July 12th. That's the, the minutes that are there. Oh yeah, I've got the wrong, I've got the wrong. Oh, here we go. My God. July 12th and August 9th. Let's start with July 12th. I, uh, I would, and that um, we got a note from Christy Corley that this doesn't include uh, in the roll call, it talks about committee members who were there, but it doesn't mention men members of the public that were there and evidently Christy was there. I don't know who else should be on the list. Christy might remember, but we should correct it to say that Christy was there. Right, any others? I guess back then, actually, um, Kirsten was also uh, not yet a member, and but she, but she came, and she and her I'm, name is listed there. Sorry, it right. is there in the public, right? Okay. Okay. If there are no other changes, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes with the Thank changes. You. And second, a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I'm abstaining because I was not uh, a member of the committee. Okay. That. Cole and Johnny? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I vote in favor of that. Okay. And Johnny? Yeah, I said aye. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. All right. So the July 12th minutes are approved. Um, August 9th, any changes to the August 9th? Agenda? I have a, a technical issue. I was not able to, when I clicked on the links in, the, in, the, in that, I was not able to access those documents. But now maybe that was just me. Um, I, I can say this. It, I know that um, somebody requested that um, the Google Doc that we're using, that we put it at the end of the agenda so that we wouldn't have to, uh, people wouldn't have to look for it. And Melissa um, said, we can't do that. Um, so I don't know how this relates to the links in the agenda, but it could be that I haven't yet given you um, permission. I haven't shared that that particular document with you. There's the several only, links here today, so I'm not sure which one. The, the first link is the only link that is not accessible. The second and third should be accessible by everybody. If folks could check that. And I didn't get it as a link. I just, when I printed out the agenda, just the, all those pages printed out and the minutes were part of what printed out. And before I printed it out, you could just scroll down and see them. I and think I, Kirsten's talking about the link within the agenda. I'm within talking the about minute. the link to the Google Docs. When I click on the second one, it's comes oh. up, sorry, the file you have requested does not exist. So not you're not talking about minutes. I'm sorry, I thought we were talking. Well, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the um, the Google links within the minutes. Oh. Even the second one or the third one, you can't. The one that says agenda proposal Google document, you click on that one and it's not accessible to you. Just a second here, let me see. Uh, when I, yeah, agenda proposal, Google Doc, it says th this document does not exist. That happens a lot with Google Docs in my experience. Is anybody else having that issue? I have that issue with the presentation, but not with the documents. I. 
I haven't tried it lately, but I got on some while ago and it worked for me. I'm going to see I, if it's shared with Kirsten. Yeah, I've gotten on once, um, but for some reason I can't. Yeah, uh, it's been shared with I'm gonna, I'm probably, based on the Brown Act uh, conversations, I'm going to move to strike all Google documents from the agenda. I'm going to suggest. I'm asking if there's um, nine pages, and does anybody have more than nine pages on the Google Doc? Because I have nine. Uh, we're referring to links within the agenda for August 9th, Christy. Oh, okay. So that's different. Yes, nine pages for the packet today. Yep. So, um, Adnan is suggesting that we just strike all of the Google links in the um, minutes. Is that correct, Adnan? Correct, yes. So basically like a shared Google platform is not compatible with the Brown Act? It, yes, there are issues with uh, uh, the Brown Act. It could be a violation of. I see. So a document might have expired also or whatever. I think we're talking about an August link. No, they, the, the, link, the link at the bottom was not fully put in there. There's a return carriage and the return carriage in any link doesn't make sense to the link itself. That's why it's not working. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, so it seems like Google Docs could be a useful tool for subcommittees, but not the whole committee. Correct. And as I understand it from Melissa, we can still use them, but including them in a packet because they change. Um, and for the history, I think that's the reason they're problematic. Is that, yeah. Okay. Uh, we need to, we need to, that's why we need to put them in as PDFs. Uh, and also because folks may be calling in to the meeting. So uh, for them, we would need to tell them the exact link for them to go to if we were to talk about it, so. It would have to be in the packet so that if they look at the it has to be in the packet yep right. as a pdf yep yeah so i think i think for the minutes of the meeting just to say that it has been developed is sufficient well i'm wondering if the public can't read it how can you approve it if we can't read it that's what we're saying it needs to be printed out and in the agenda in order as for a pdf yes Correct, correct, as a PDF, yes. So does that mean we should postpone the approval of the August 9th agenda? No, we should just delete the links to all the Google documents. So that means and that approve the public after doesn't the have it? Okay, that makes sense. But yeah. if you that, that delete means... it, then the public can't read it. Christy, we're saying that because it could be a Brown Act violation, we're not going to use that technology anymore. So we're deleting it from historical minutes. Right, but then maybe it's important information that we want to read. So how can you fix that? It's minutes, it's not part of the agenda packet. Those are all- In, so, a, way, in a way, if we actually did it and we actually had it, can we take it out? Because if we take it out, then aren't we obfuscating something we did? And isn't that a worse violation of the Brown Act than having a link that doesn't work? No, no. What, what I had done in the Google document was I had accumulated every single minute that we had, all the meeting minutes into one document. And now, if you want to see all the minutes, you have to download the 17 packets that are available on the website. That's how you would get to see them. You won't get to see them all in one place, which is what I was trying to solve for. Right. So that's not gonna be able to happen. So yes, you're right, Christy. The public will not have access to all the documents, which means all the agenda minutes in one place, in one document. They would have to download each separate document as a PDF separately. So well, yes, you're right. Thanks for trying. I, I think that would have been nice. <laughs> of course. And also we're, you know, we're sort of duplicating the, the fact that the town has a website and we have a page on the website and in, and our minutes should be posted there after they're approved. So the public can always 
go there and see them. And if that's not happening, we should be following up and goosing the staff to do that. Correct. Right. Okay. So to approve these minutes then, um, the second set, do we do that? Do we do both? Approve them with the deletion with of the, the deletion. reference to the docs. Okay. I, I move Google that doc. we approve the August nine minutes with the deletion of those last links. Hi kids. Can you also add the public that attended so we know? Oh, we did that at the beginning. We added that at the beginning, did we not? To uh, one, one agenda, but not to the other. No, it is. You're, you're listed, Christy, on the uh, also present on the August 9th up at the beginning. OK, so I, I propose for the minutes, I'll make a note in the minutes, like the committee is not is going forward not using this platform because of Brown Act issues. Correct. OK. In tonight's minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, I was talking about the, the August 9th minutes. My name is misspelled, by the way, in the also present. On the That's my minutes. fault. I took those minutes. Sorry. Okay, I'll change that. That must happen to you endlessly. <laughs> really <laughs> sorry. And, and then there are a surprising number of ways to misspell my name. Yeah. <laughs> but it is K I R. K I R. Kirsten. 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 Yeah, Kirsten. Kirsten. Okay, sounds good. So we're going to take out then the reference to the Google Docs from the August 9th minutes. Are we, do folks want me to amend the minutes by taking out the reference to the Google Docs or adding a note that says subsequently the committee has, you know, with an asterisk? I think it makes sense to take out the references and to put the, uh, to put the statement about we're not going to be using it in the minutes for tonight's meeting. Okay, sounds good. So I had a motion to approve. As I second. Okay, we have a second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Um, new business. Uh, inclusionary housing fund. Who can walk us through that? Um, um, I will. I think I was the head of that subcommittee. Um, Thank you, Judy. Let's see if you go to the addendum in the, the appendix, the last page of the minute packet. Uh, is that right? No, sorry. Where are they? Page seven. Page seven. There somewhere. Oh, yeah. Here I'm double. Double printed without numbers. Okay. So we had two subcommittee meetings about this. Uh, and um, three of us were present at the first one and all four of us at the second one. We um, drafted it and then tweaked a little bit over several over those discussions. And this is what we came up with. Do you all have that so that you can read along with me? This is the how to spend inclusionary how to spend the inclusionary fund. housing fund resources. Right. Would you, you like know, me to share share the screen so we can all see oh, the same could, thing? Yeah, for the people who don't have it in hand, that might make it That'd easier. Be great. Thank you. So the town has an inclusionary housing fund of Correct me, council member three, you know, three point some million dollars. That was mostly from when the Blue Oaks development uh, happened and some smaller amounts uh, trickle into it. It's been there for some years. And uh, now the housing element is being finalized. Um, there's some question about how these funds should be spent. Some people are saying, well, it's been there for eight years, let's just spend it been sitting around doing nothing, let's spend it. But um, our overview was 
it's been sitting there because there hasn't been sort of an organized uh, attempt to do housing, especially in an equitable way in all that time. And so it would make sense to find ways to try to be as equitable as possible in the distribution of that. And the council has asked us for, for this um, advice, um, wanting to make sure that they are inclusionary and uh, as equitable as they can be. So um, th that was our basic premise, that to come at it through the lens of, of equity and not thinking about other priorities for, for the money. So we just had a list of questions and we went through them and we tried to answer them um, in terms of the priorities. Um, should we limit it to housing for low and very low? We thought, yes, that since this money was specifically designed for inclusionary housing and we were trying to be equitable, there was no reason it should be spent on housing that wasn't low or very low income. Um, and that that would have to do with um, uh, funds spent actually in the, in the building or uh, renting or that sort of thing that the concessions that were made for fee reductions or that sort of thing should be available to all residents, but that um, the money should only be spent um, on things that apply to the low and very low. Financial assistance, um, do we use it up? as direct aid or do we try to maintain an ongoing program? First, you know, there's a lot of thought about um, direct assistance to renters, low-income renters especially, but the idea that there's going to be another RENA cycle and this is an ongoing um, sort of issue that if we um, send it all out as grants that gets used up, then the people that come next wouldn't have any assistance in it, and that it might make more sense to um, maintain it so it's sort of an ongoing program. Although we recognize there are difficulties with the administration of that kind of thing, but that, that's really a problem for the council to solve, not for us to solve. Um, that we thought loans were better than direct aid uh, or grants, and that loan feeds and the repayment of loans could sort of maintain the fund a few larger versus many smaller. We thought that spreading the wealth around was, was more desirable than giving it all in a chunk to one guy, one project, even a nonprofit um, builder sort of a person. A few larger versus many smaller. Uh, so the suggested language was no more than a third to, to go to any one person. That number was totally arbitrary and pulled out of a hat. Council would uh, adapt that as they saw fit. We were sure. We thought that we thought it was important to support ADUs because they're um, faster, lower cost projects, more likely to get them done in the near future and actually be of assistance some pe to some people. Um, that the money might go to um, support some dedicated staff to streamline the process so they would get built and that there would be. Are you talking about dedicated staff at the town? Yes. Yeah. So that there would be an, an associate planner, for example, who took on the AD work and, and they might need um, to supplement someone's salary in order to, uh, to be able mm -hmm. to do that. And then um, financial assistance in building, perhaps for some, those would, those would, um, if we we're going to actually give money to them, we would want to deed restrict. We thought that that may be in here further down that that you wouldn't just give money to people building things. You would want them to be committed to the the low income process. And um, and the prioritizing JADs and conversion of accessory buildings that have already been built that only need an added kitchen or bath to become ADUs ones that would count towards RENA because same thing, that's a less expensive and quicker to do. Now, I, I have a question for uh -huh. how that sort of fits in with the, uh, do you want questions now or wait until we get all the way through? Um, whatever, now it's okay. Um, how that fits with providing uh, assistance to, for, 
In other words, it might be something that would be a low income project, but would be undertaken by someone who is fairly wealthy. Um, if it's a, well, there's a balance here. <laughs> There's right. a, if it's if they're building something that they're willing to deed restrict and commit to being um, low low income rented in fact rented to low income people not their nephew who happens to be uh, a student in low income um, then they might they might qualify we were just trying to put out generalities right and it's not our job to design the program it's our job to sort of give guidance about generalities, what we thought were the equitable ways to do this. Uh, and also any of you who were with me on this subcommittee, feel free to <laughs> chime in if I'm misstating or skipping over something. And uh, just so this is this is just wording that we're going to give to the council uh, to t so that they can make the guidelines. So the, uh, or these are the, you know, they're, they're gonna be able to do this. And, and again, they'll, they'll massage it however they want to. Right, no, I'm just trying to understand the thinking of the committee and that makes perfect sense to me, Judith. Yeah, we, we you know, to me, and you know, as we talked about, it, it's absurd to give a very wealthy person some, some of the money that's, you know, directed to low income funds. Well, housing, unless, unless they're gonna actually produce a really great low income thing, right, that, that we, you know, might contribute to our, the, the preference and the priority would be to, to help people who didn't have that much money accomplish it. And right. I don't know how you set up the criteria for all of that. Right. Um, consider using for affiliated housing. Same thing, this is a bit of an issue. The Sequoias, the prior in Stanford. Do we, do we give money to the Sequoias to build <laughs> some of their low-income housing? I, they, they have a right to apply for it. And um, same thing, if they're genuinely gonna produce it and um, deed restrict it, then, then maybe so. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. That there should be some active soliciting of additional affiliated housing partners in town. Um, uh, should we require uh, below market rate contracts for rentals? We and we thought yes for any projects getting financial assistance. Anybody the town actually gives money to should be mm -hmm. required to commit to actually doing what, what it's designed to do rather than building and then not doing it. Other people can build ADUs and rent them or not rent them as they want, but if they get money from the town, they should be um, providing low-income housing. It's, it, they are, low, they are uh, inclusionary housing funds, not just funds for housing. Um, and then this gets complicated. We talked about the, you know, they'd have to have monitoring team to do it and it, that it gets expensive and complicated and we're not sure how they would actually accomplish it, but it seemed important that um, they do. Right. Um, things, that things that would be built and then for sale would be a different matter. You know, they make low income house houses and then sell them, low income units and sell them too. Are there income requirements to get AIDS? this is the, the thing that you raise, should be right. giving the funds to wealthy residents. The details of that, the, count, the council really needs to work out. There was some uh, discussion about use it for hiring consultants as opposed to aid directly to people renting or people building. And we sort of said no for hiring a consultant, but yes for dedicated staffing in the planning department. If the, if the Parling department wants to have a consultant to do this in general, that's a separate matter, but to use right. these funds, uh, we thought they should, it should be kept in-house and, and have dedicated staffing, not somebody, partly because we were concerned that it can, a lot of these consultants have, you know, their, their training and mindset is for Palo Alto and places like that, as opposed to us, whereas the, our planning staff understands, you know, the local community and our needs a little better. Um, and then we suggested looking at additional resources such as apprenticeships and internships to help in, with design. When, when we're thinking about consultants, it's like who knows what and how do you find out and could internships uh, or apprenticeships provide some of the information they might need going forward. Um, 
And finally, notices of funding availability. Uh, if using, let's see, what's HGF? Um, I can't remember what that acronym stands for. Oh, oh, just the fund, the the right. housing trust fund. Yeah, the trust. Yeah, uh, okay. uh, to assist nonprofits providing the housing related services, consider using a competitive process rather than just having the first person who comes along get the money so that same thing we have a chance to look at and weigh the potential applicants and not we, <laughs> the council and the planning department to see who would give us, you know, would be most cost effective to use or would use it in the most equitable way, that sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a draft and we, we are open to your suggestions. It looks anything we didn't consider, anything that's in there you think we should take out? So Marianne and John, as, the, as a part of the council who'll be receiving this, when you look at it, do you think it's formatted appropriate? Is it helpful? Is it formatted in a way that's helpful to the council? Should it have things in it that it doesn't have? Does it have things in it that are inappropriate? I'm curious, Marianne and John, your reaction to the hiring a dedicated staff member. No, I think this is a really great start. I think it um, touches on most of the issues that we've touched on briefly in the past. So I think it's, it's, um, it's um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's going to be really helpful. Good, good outline. I'm not seeing anything that should be there that I is not off the top of my head that uh, we would have talked about in the past or need to talk about in the future. I wouldn't be surprised, but uh, I think it's better best to have more than less. You mean more than this, or that no, that this, all of this detail this is, is okay? <laughs> this is a lot. Okay. So John said this is a good start. I think it's both a start in that the in that the committee is only looking at it right now, and it's also an end in that if we approve it, we're sending it to you. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. for us, it's an end, and for you, it's a start. I was that's, that's what I was thinking exactly. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially comparing it to before, there was nothing. <laughs> This is fantastic. Um, I wonder about just some formatting for it so that if a member of the public was seeing this document, they might have like a little more context about the questions you were responding to or the process, you know, in terms of it being a document to sub submit to the council or be included in an agenda packet, just like formatting to make it easier to understand for the public. Um, I'm really curious about the dedicated staff position. That's something I've also thought about when considering this fund because like $4 million in uh, construction is just like, boom, can go so fast. So it's like how to leverage this fund to actually make a difference. And it seems like, um, I mean, it's really hard to hire staff. So it's easier to say, oh, hire dedicated staff for three years than I think it might actually be to do that. Um, but yeah, in terms of how to leverage um, the funds to have a dedicated staff person who would work on this issue of how to create affordable housing in town, I think is a really interesting idea. Yeah, I think if, um, from our perspective, we didn't want the town to go out and hire a bunch of consultants and get a bunch of studies with this money. Mm -hmm. And we did think now maybe not a full-time staff person, but a half-time, you know, FTE or something like that, or somebody who's already working there, but put them on this, that these funds would be an efficient use of funds to have that expertise in-house. Yeah, I like that. I think that's, that strikes me as very smart. John and Marion, or sorry, go ahead. I don't know. Uh, I was just going to say, and I don't know how 
you know, like creating an endowment or anything like that works, but just off the top of my head, having been in some conversations with nonprofits recently, but if you have an endowment and if a $4 million goes towards an endowment, that's $200,000 a year, right? Like, so that could, I mean, if it is, if this money is created as an endowment, it could actually have somebody full time, but then you couldn't use the money. But so, <laughs> so it might defeat the purpose. But even if it was a $2 million endowment, that would be, you know, $100,000. So per year that you could use because it's 5% of the endowment that you uh, uh, are able to use, uh, because it's invested and all that fun stuff. So anyways, don't want to say too much more about that. But um, should I just we wanted add to put a that line? Out there. Should we add a line that said, says, consider using part of the money to for you know to create an endowment so you have ongoing funds i don't know if you if we set up the endowment last january then we'd have a whole lot less money than we have now so would you like to add that Adnan? and what sure. does the rest of the group think about that i wonder if you could set it up so that you could get contributions I wonder if there are people who would be interested in contributing money to a fund like that. I think wow. there are ways, you know, they may end up uh, asking for contributions for things, but I don't know if it would be to this fund per se, it would be to the effort. I, I, they probably want to not commingle these funds with other funds just for the straightforwardness of record keeping, I would guess. Well, theoretically, more money should be coming in from other projects. Yeah, this is not a one-off thing. I mean, it's sort of a one-off thing because um, Blue Oaks is the biggest thing anyone's built in a long time. But if another project was built at market rate, they'd have to contribute either in um, market rate housing or to this fund. So it's not like this is the only time money is going to come in. Uh, yeah, well, there's not, not a lot of room left in town to do another Blue Oaks, so the likelihood we'll get that kind of a windfall is pretty small. That's sort of outside. Well, except the arena is tripling, so I think there will be projects. Right, but if they, but all of those projects will have low income, like the Wedge has low income housing as part of it, so they don't have to contribute to this fund because they're doing low income housing. It's been, they've been in lieu funds. That, that come in. Yeah, I just think there's the, you know, the idea of this fund is not to be an endowment, but money will come in as development occurs. Right. And so I don't think we need right. to think this is the only money we're ever going to get. Yeah. Okay. Well, and as money, as people pay back loans. If it's set up as loans, that's why we suggested yeah. it right. as loans. Yeah. All right. Lucy, could you um, be a little more specific about formatting? If you give me an example for just one of the things, then we could probably approve it with the understanding it would be reformatted in that way. But I, um, I, I hate to ask for approval and then we're going to change it around in a way that people don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I just meant even like a heading that, you know, like the race and equity subcommittee response to the town council's questions, you know, just, just like a little. Oh, uh, okay. And then, um, or, or saying like the, you know, the following questions were asked of us kind of thing. Yeah. We, just making it clear that you, in this, you are responding to the questions. Yes. Of the council. Yes. Yeah. Or these are the questions that, that we've considered in our recommendations for them. Mm -hmm. Right. So, for example, where it says limit to housing for very low. So I'm just going to change that to should we limit uh, yeah. the housing for very to very low um, uh, or low income housing? Yeah. And I Can think you put a number on about that? An introductory paragraph mm -hmm. that that we could certainly do that would be straightforward enough. I don't. Yeah, and we can put it as numbers instead of, and we can put it as numbers instead of bullets because then people can refer to specific numbered. Um, right. So yeah. we would take we'd take out that first thing, reorganization, consolidation of discussion. If we're looking at the thing that's actually going to go to the council, right? Um, it, it take out that first blue line and say, you know, in response to the council's request that the race and equity committee weigh in on how the inclusionary housing fund should be spent. 
These are our recommendations. These are our recommendations. Right. Yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. So you could alter it. It's not altering the content, just the. Yeah, it's it, just giving a little context, I think. And then can he'll he'll type it out and show it to us in a moment, I believe. <laughs> He's good at that. I guess I can show the uh, Google Doc here because uh, we've we've we're doing that, so right. that would be okay to show the Google Doc here. Um, so just give me a minute, and I'll and I'll bring it up. How do I raise my hand? Re under reactions, you should be able to do that. I'm trying. Should say raise hand. It says recognize hand. Huh. Um, right, and mine under reactions. Why don't, why don't you go ahead two minutes? Somebody's blocked me. Um, I was, in, I questioned um, Colorado Steamboat and they, um, said they would give funds to employees that committed to work for a town for seven years, one member of the person who got the housing. So I thought that was a really interesting uh, way to look at it. They did do deed restricted. They found they were not getting enough ADUs, so they canceled the deed restricted and they... Um, shared the funds with everyone and they got more ADUs. So that's just something I wanted to suggest. I'm sorry, you said Colorado Steamboat. You mean the well, town of Steamboat, Colorado? Yes. Okay, so, so it was the town of, of Well, it was, no. No, let me, let me correct that. <laughs> Went a couple places this summer. It was Wyoming. <laughs> so, sorry. I, I'm really interested in what other cities do. So when I see something in a newspaper, I, I make a phone call to the city and I said, what are you doing with this? And it was a seven year, you had to commit to the city to work for the city and you got the low income housing. You were a priority if you worked for the city. So that is something we can uh, consider because that's a commitment of employment to get the funds. And it was only one person from the housing in the house that would be committed to that. If it didn't occur, they had stipulations, but you know, what would occur? Um, Christy, I think, I think this is a specific fund, the Inclusionary Housing Fund, and it, it has specific criteria for- um, well, We create our own criteria. The, the town creates their own criteria. And I think there's already some criteria and we're trying to flush out the criteria. John and Mary That's two minutes for public comment. Christy, maybe you could actually write that out and send it um, in via the website so that we saw the real the details, not just as you remember them off the cuff, but as you know they are and you could look at it and make sure it says exactly what you want to say and exactly what the program does and okay. actually and then send it to the council not to us because we're going to be through with this after this evening <laughs> but it's an interesting concept for sure except what if you want to fire them they start well, that, doing that, they they have have housing and they're doing that's what i meant they had stipulations if they were let go what would happen or um, if they chose to leave what would happen yeah um but it is a way to get commitment of employment over a long period of time. Um, and I actually do think that, you know, some of my single friends, whether they're low or very low income, still need housing. So why would the money go to only very low and low when you have some people in our community you know, that now need the funds. So I, I'm gonna throw that out for discussion that single women or men in this community and they wanna stay in this community, how they would also have access to these funds. Um, I have to, we have to move on. 
on this um, and the time so. for public comment. What other um, comments do people have? So, so I've made the changes here. If folks want mm -hmm. to take a look at this uh, at this document. Okay, so if uh, Christy, you can see things, right? There's no one here by phone, so I don't. We don't need to read it out uh, again for the people on phone because there is no one on the phone. I don't think. Correct. So I've just made a few changes. I've reworded things. I haven't changed anything underneath the bullets. So these mm -hmm. are these are all the same. I've just reworded the questions and I added this um, introduction here. Yeah, looks much better. Looks great. Great. The only thing I changed is in this last one, this was in part of the question. If using the HTF to assist nonprofits, consider using a competitive process. So I just put that as part of the answer rather than as part of the question. And I would spell out HTF. So housing trust fund. And but is it a housing trust fund or is it the inclusionary housing fund? The, the inclusion. In town, it's usually called the inclusionary housing fund, That's but it's what I thought. like in the consultant's report, it was referred maybe more generally across municipalities is referred to as a housing trust fund. Right, but we're talking about our funds. So wouldn't it make sense to say if using our inclusionary towns, inclusionary- What funds. if I put both of them in there? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Sure. Okay. Inclusionary housing fund. Yep. And I'll put that up here as well. Uh, inclusionary housing fund. Uh, Housing Trust Fund. How's that? Good. Super. Yep. Great. All right. I'm going to stop sharing now. Oh, thank you, Adnan. That is so nice to have it done <laughs> right uh, in front of us. I, I want to clarify. I was saying to Christy that I think that there is more specific criteria already within the town and I just looked up the inclusionary lot requirements portion of the municipal code and it is very vague um, what's already in code. It just says the in lieu fees shall be placed in a special housing fund for use solely for affordable housing. So that does seem like that could be interpreted pretty broadly, like potentially to include something like uh, Christy was talking about. That's, a quite, that's something to be directed to the council, really not to us. <laughs> okay, if everybody likes it, somebody want to move, we approve it. Can I ask one thing? Um, the other question I had was just uh, recommending only grants, I mean, only loans as opposed to, to grants. What do folks think about like uh, that as a, that strength of recommendation, only loans across the board? I didn't think we were recommending only loans. Oh, it says, I, I, it says loans preferable to grants. Uh -huh. doesn't yeah, mean, yeah. It might mean you do 60, 40, it, it, the same thing. The council can, I think we're, we're, I think we're trying to get at the idea that we didn't want them to give all their money away and then empty the fund and then have only what trickles in that we wanted them to do this in the way that would maintain the fund so we could keep, keep supporting more units. Mm -hmm. Can you make sure the fund is amount is in there because you said three point question mark and then, and then Lucy said four four million. I mean, it's important to have the exact number. It's like three. It's currently three point eight million. I don't think it matters exactly what it is. This is these are recommendations for how they spend the funds, whether it's three or five or ten. Well, right. we want to know as residents what it is and and what it grows to and what it well it fluctuates right. Right, and that's not uh, that's not our only going you know, up. That's not our thing. The council knows that. Yeah, you um, know the finance committee knows that. The equity. Well, we haven't had a finance committee meeting in a while, so yeah. I'm sure the council will make note of it when it's discussed at the council level. Uh, yeah. Could I make one more tiny suggestion, and that is requires below market rate contracts that you write that out. Yes, I will do that right now. Thank you.
And who approves this? Is this the finance committee? Is there a recommendation on approvals? We are, if we approve it, we are sending it to the council as a recommendation to, as things that they should take into account when they create their guidelines. These are not the guidelines. These are, these are the equity committee's suggestions for how they- so There should be checks and balances that are happening after the, the money is distributed, correct? These are our suggestions for how they use the money. Did you recommend that we then follow up in any way? You can see what we recommended because we just went through the list. So I see, um, I'm gonna, uh, you, you get, a, the public gets two minutes to comment one time. Uh, I think committees are slightly different than a, than a other committee, no? No. After each agenda item, there's a there's a period of public comment. It's okay, you're, that's you're acting it more as a committee member. All right. Do well, I don't know motion? if it's proper because I was chair of the subcommittee. But if nobody else is going to do it, I would like to make a motion <laughs> that yes. this gets approved as as currently drafted with the recommendations that we've seen from Adnan. I'd second. All, all those in favor? I think Aye. maybe we ha maybe we have to take a, a roll call vote for something mm -hmm. like this. I think okay. that's what they said that the Brown Act when they did that, that they want us to do roll call for virtually everything. <laughs> Action. Correct. Okay. Um, Lucy Neely. Aye. Judy Murphy. Aye. Kirsten? Aye. Adnan? Aye. aye. A Andrew? I, I want to just say I don't agree with 100% of this, but I'm voting aye because it's a committee process and here's where we are. Johnny? Aye. And aye. Okay. Nicole? He's not here. Is he? I don't His know. His face isn't there. Oh, Is I think Cole dropped off. You dropped off. Okay. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda, uh, Kirsten, do you want to take this one? Sure. Um, I, this is more of an announcement and uh, ask for suggestions, but I include, included in the agenda is the flyer for a program which is being held this Sunday. Uh, starting at Valley Presbyterian Church, uh, which includes a lunch, and then three o'clock, the full event. Uh, we've come this far by faith, Songs from the Black Experience. And I heard this in San Francisco. This is a group uh, that is based in the East Bay. Uh, Dr. Elliott is a professor somewhere in the East Bay. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was a very inspiring and enjoyable afternoon. So I just wanted to make sure that all of you know about it. And if you have suggestions for how I can publicize it, we've been trying to publicize it through, I think it's been on the PV forum, actually. I'm not on the PV forum, but I think someone put it on. And, um, and other people have put it on, on their social, um, social networks and we're gonna have some folks going from the Sequoia to the three o'clock event, so and to the ten forty-five event. So it's just an opportunity that I think will be um, will be a lot of fun. That's it. If we um, if this committee uh, was interested in saying we were co-sponsors or something like that then we could probably ask Terry to blast it out on all the all the town's social media. I don't know how effect, how much effect that actually has, but it, I believe that's right. Um, are we Terry does a weekly weekly thing for the PV forum as well, right? But that's right. mostly town town stuff. Yeah, but she has, she has, you know, she puts things on the Facebook page and on the, Tw you know, all that stuff I don't look at, but I know she does it. And I don't know if anybody looks at it. They really ought to find out whether anybody looks at it because I know she puts effort into having multiple things. Um, and I, she, I don't, she won't put things on there unless they're town sponsored in some way. 
or committee sponsored. So uh, I don't know if just an endorsement from us in some way, I don't, I'm not sure about the bureaucracy of it. Marianne, could you weigh in on the bureaucracy of that? Well, is this, this is happening at the local church. Mm -hmm. I think, and we have a great relationship with all the um, churches. I think Jeremy would say, put it out on all our social media platforms. And, and I think we could encourage that by, by formally endorsing it and, and asking her to. Well, you could say, yeah, the Race and Equity Committee endorses this event and encourages everyone to attend. Yeah, that would be great. So, does so do we need to have a vote on endorsing it? I think so. I think any, I think any so. action we take, we do have to have a vote. Is any re anybody see a reason not to do that? I, I really do think, you know, our committee, it's good for our committee to take actions like this. It, it shows that we're, you know, on, on top of it and doing things and, you know, don't exist just in the ether. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think I think it would be great. So I don't hear any objections. I don't know if we need a formal motion or not. Yeah. Kirsten, why don't you make the motion since I, you brought this to I move it. that the uh, committee endorse, uh, we've come this far by faith, uh, and uh, request the town to um, publicize it in any way that's feasible. I second, I second the motion. Third. <laughs> All right, let's do a roll call. Lucy? Judy? Yes. Kirsten? Yes. Adnan? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Johnny? Yes. And me? Yes. Okay, passes. All right, in January, we're going to have upcoming elections and um, I'm not, I am not gonna be continuing as chair. I'm still trying to discern whether I'm gonna be able to continue as a committee member, but I wanted to give people enough notice to start thinking about this and who might um, replace me. Also, it's looking like Cole is not gonna be continuing on the committee. And so we would need a replacement. Um, so we'd be looking for suggestions. Uh, any other, things that we should be thinking about with the elections coming up in January. Are you resigning in January or resigning late? Yes, I wanna give the committee time to figure out who wants to be chair, that sort of thing. Well, we could just, we could downsize the committee which makes it easier to get quora, quora whatever the plural quorum is. <laughs> If you have and, we have seven, less, and we have fewer people to do the work. Yeah, I I thought I saw somewhere that the committee size is set at eight, but I don't remember. As I recall, it, the this committee size was expanded, yeah, to nine. Yeah, usually it's not a even number because of quorum issues. Five. I wonder if we want to pull it down to eight. Having an even number is uh, is weird because then you still have the same quorum number. Right. But you have one fewer person to do the work, so you you, you know you, you have a tendency to have an odd number, which would mean you'd go down to seven, which means that. Um, I mean, we could look at this in January and see how many people we have. You know, I'm just saying if if, mm -hmm. if, if, if we're losing people and there aren't a lot of people stepping forward, having seven would not be so terrible. Now, the problem with having nine is you have to have five to have a meeting. Well, and we could look, you know, we can all look around and reach out to people to join us too. I mean, that's how some of us got here. Kim, <laughs> um, has Cole, is Cole, when is he not going to be on the committee anymore? Just in terms of filling a vacancy. I think any time would be good for him because, I mean, he would, he wants to still be involved, but basically he's finding that his schoolwork and his, you know, the other activities that he has, it's it's too much to do. So all we have, and some of the other committees have, you know, student liaisons where they're not a, they're not a full active member, so they don't have the responsibility of being 
at the meeting and then they don't we don't they don't add to the quorum issue um but they they can come to the meetings when they can they can contribute as they can they can be on subcommittees as they can so it's a it's a good way to get student mm -hmm. involvement without getting into the kind of precariousness of, of a student member i think is he's there, very interested in that actually yeah, yeah I think right. is there an age like that is there an age um requirement i don't think no. so I don't verbal think. okay so we could we could potentially recruit from corta madera as well or ormondale depending on if those be, kiddos stay to up be a late. liaison I, I i as opposed to be a full member once again yeah. i don't i'm not sure i think it would be a good idea to be a full member because i think it's it's even okay. hard to have a member you know to even have a high school student be a member is tough for them, tougher, tougher for them than for us. Yeah, I think it'd be great to have student liaison because I think, it, you know, the more we can get input without putting too great a burden on them, the better. So Marianne and John, does that fit with what you understand about the student liaison role? I didn't know that we had a student liaison. On neither. Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see any problem with it. I don't think we have formal, but we've done that with conservation where you know kids have been interested in conservation. And so we just have them come and speak up and yeah, I think it's a great idea. Okay, he'll be really happy to hear that. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so I would ask you if you're um, interested in being chair, please let me know. And also um please start recruiting <laughs> for cole's one position so far right okay yeah i mean i do think it's an interesting idea in terms of recruiting like well, i think we'll probably get the perfect committee member however that lands but we could you know like adnan said try and recruit from certain community if we wanted to I'm not, I don't know what community, but. Well, that that often is the best way to get someone as, as you pointed out, Judith. <laughs> okay, the next item is old business, um, fixing San Mateo. And can, Andrew, can I ask one more question about the last item? Sure. Would folks, I mean, if we, like, if we did, you know, reach out to middle schoolers at Corte Madera, middle schoolers even younger than high school. But, you know, we're really clear about, it could be high schoolers too, you know, they can be high schoolers that live in town, but youth in town. Um, and we were really clear about what the time commitment level is and like, you know, only apply if you can meet this commitment. Would folks be open to um, having more youth members? Another? I don't see what's wrong with Woodside High School. I mean, they actually have minority people that go there, unlike some of our schools in town here. Yeah, that's totally. where local high school public school too. kids go theoretically if they're from this mm -hmm. town. I see them every day because my office is across the street from there. Mm -hmm. And they they may well have a uh, you know some sort of an equity club of their own group and clubs the wrong mm -hmm. word to use you know. Uh, organization of their own that we and they would have a faculty advisor and we you know we might reach out to that person and have them reach out to that group and see if there's somebody interested if if we're really trying to get a, me, a student member as opposed to another resident member well they owe me a favor i gave them a bunch of my furniture when i moved <laughs> we when, needed when desks did i talk on this I don't know. Are you going to open it up to the public? Uh, yes, go ahead. Thanks. I think it's really great that um, a high schooler can uh, be involved with this committee and put it on their resume that they worked with the town of Portola Valley. And I think we should recruit at um, MA and uh, Woodside. It might make more sense. Thank you, Christy. Um, I will say that um, 
it's very difficult having students on the committee with their time. And um, we've run into this on the subcommittee. Um, Johnny and Cole are no longer on the subcommittee. It's just too difficult. No, how Judy said, where they can just have input but not have to have a voting member. That's Christy, I, mean. I have to remind you that you get to speak for two minutes at, um, at the end of an agenda item. And, and I mean, maybe you should apply to be on the committee. So you can't interject um, when the rest of us are having conversation. Well, you're not opening it up and I'm not clear when to talk, thank you. You, you get to talk one time on each agenda item for two minutes, as I understand it. Yeah, okay. Um, so I am sort of cautious about it based on recent experience. Theoretically, it sounds like a good idea, but um, and I and I am anticipate that students are excited about putting it, you know, being able to say they're on this committee, but it's really challenging um, with schedules. And that was the reason why I was suggesting middle school rather than high school, just because the homework and everything just increases in high school, whereas in middle school, it's potentially not as much. It's still, we're still over, I'm just going to generalize, we all over schedule our kids way too much. So right. just say, saying that out loud. But, um, but that's, mm -hmm. that's the reason I was saying. Um, yeah, because, you know, we're making them ready to work from home when they're, you know, adults as well, because we're giving them so much homework. All right, I'll stop. And maybe the student liaison role is a good option for this because then they have the flexibility of being able to not come to a meeting and we don't have to count them for quorum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think the liaison is a much better idea that in fact, it, it, the experience has been that, it, you know, not just here, but more widely that, yes, yeah, it's hard for them to, to give to the community to the committee what you know what you expect a member to give in terms of participating fully in subcommittees in terms of um taking minutes in terms of drafting you know drafts of things they just you know they're young and they it's nice for them to get that experience but it's also hard and hard as a committee to sort of function and move forward efficiently if they're doing it sort of at, if they're learning <laughs> on your time. So, in, you know, theoretically, it's lovely. And I think it's really important that we have their input, and which is why I like the inviting yeah. them to be liaison. But, to, you know, actually having them as members is not always a great, con they're not always able to contribute well to, to committee work or even discussions. Sort of. Because they're, so they're about, shy, you know, they're shyer and they, you know, all kinds of reasons. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about we move on to the next agenda item? Andrew, um, do you have a report on what you've, you wanted to look into Fix and San Mateo before we endorsed? Um, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. um, does that mean you want us to wait or does that mean we should go ahead and endorse? I don't have an opinion either way. Okay. Well, well the, let's go uh, ahead and discuss maybe not, and then decide whether or not we want to endorse that. You know, I, uh, I, I, have, I hope to get you these things in time for the agenda so they would come out with a packet, but they didn't come to me until after our deadline. So I tried to get them out. I sent a, I sent a note to the town, um, to our address at the town, because in theory, those things get passed right on to us, like Christy's email got passed on to us, but um, this one didn't ever come to me. Did, the, did you guys get forwarded from the town, the email that had the links to these things? So I'm gonna screen share then so that it, so that uh, we soon let me let me try to organize this because <laughs> I don't do this very often. Let me first of all um, bring you up to date. Uh, I've been in correspondence with Nancy Goodben, who's the woman who presented to us. And the follow-up is that the Board of San Mateo County Board of Supervisors did in fact set up a committee of two supervisors, Pine and Slocum to look at setting up civilian oversight. Um, so they, 
they're going to have a public study session on Tuesday, November the 1st at the Board of Supervisors. Uh, I don't know what time or who, who's involved. I just know they, they're gonna have a public study session then. Um, that Fix and Man San Mateo is planning to have a comment on their October 18 meeting and also November 1, they're gonna ask the Board of Supervisors to uh, formally set this up and to include Fix and San Mateo in the membership of the board. And what they originally, they were asking us to urge the Board of Supervisors to set this up. And now that's, uh, and now that they're, they're looking into setting it up, uh, what they would like from us is um, any individual council member who's willing to endorse Fix and San Mateo could add their names to the website. Um, and then there's a sample, both resolution and letter to the Board of Supervisors um, from either this committee or the town council is what her wording is. And she included links to those, to drafts of those. Um, it seems to me that it's, because we're a committee from the town, it's more appropriate that we ask the council to do it rather than acting on our own. I think that's the, the proper procedure, but um, we, that's something we could talk about if you want. So let me share, first of all, if I can successfully do it, um, the... And as you're doing that, I can ask a question just yes. in terms, so what, so what the suggestion is here is to uh, offer to the council a recommendation that the council endorse Fix and San Mateo. Yes, and so and so we might uh, smooth that for them by drafting the letter and suggesting that they use our letter and then they could tweak our letter if you want. So let me screen share this and uh, my screen has other stuff on it. So it's gonna be a little confusing. Let me see if I can make it big and sort of obscure the other stuff on my screen so that it's not, Should be. so you don't see my porn windows open behind it. Um, be able to just click on the document, shouldn't you? And uh, let's see, I, now I've lost my, um, I think I have to do it from the from Zoom here. Let's see. This is not the Zoom I'm on. Where? Under the share screen button, you can either share the entire screen or a window. Uh, okay. Okay. So let me try that. Sorry, folks. I hate to have to wait while people figure out check. <laughs> uh, here, my thing, share screen, just says share screen. Oh, here it shows desktop, do, do, do. Here we go, let's try. Okay, let's, I'm gonna have to do desktop because that's the only one that's highlighted here. Share, and then let me, is this, where is this? Here we go. Okay, can you see it? Is it sharing it with you? Yes. Okay. Yes. So either as an, uh, this is, is you, I mean, you can read it. Um, the things that stuck out to me were that it is a request to include them in the committee and a request to pass the ordinance to create this oversight. Um, thank you for committee. Committee, we understand there's a study session writing on behalf of, this would say the- um, Town of Portola Valley. Yeah, town council, you know, town council. Um, we just be on behalf of the- Oops, here, I mean, it's not going in, what am I doing? Maybe it's a PDF. So, I was so trying for to this, type. should we, should, is this something we want to do now or do we want to bring this back to our next, to next month with a, with a drafted letter 
And well, I thought we could just, here's a sample letter. Do we want to change it? If we like the letter the way it is, just filling in the blanks, then we have it. Um, and because, because the study session is November the 1st, if we could act on it, it would be nice. If we don't like the letter, then we, then we have to, then we can't. But I, um, unless some- You won't be able to change this letter. You have to click on file and make a copy of it before you can change it. Okay. Um, so let, let's just- I'm in favor of approving the letter and just filling in that blank um, because last time I feel like we got a very good understanding of the organization. I, my, my memory it is that we were ready to approve it, but Andrew did want to do some research on it um, because he has specialized knowledge about this stuff. Um, so I don't know what we want to do at this point. I'm I trying to, I'm giving I'm per, permission to get into my screen here and he can do things I can't do. So let's keep reading and, and may change. Obvious, that's obvious, the town council of, you know, the town of Portola Valley. Um, representatives, it, they're asking that representatives of Fix and San Mateo be included on the committee and as, and as presenters and plan, they're asking to speak at the study session. Fix and San Mateo is the primary organization within the county doing extensive research on the topic and that if you've looked at their website, you see that they're, you know, it looks to me like a pretty upright uh, group that's done an, a lot of work around this with data from all over the country, et cetera. They've asked them to pass a basic ordinance um that creates a civilian oversight board which you know i'm certainly all in favor for right. of and i think that's one of the one of the motivating reasons to form this race and echo committee that we have was generated by you know the murder of george floyd and everything we know about the lack of oversight for um police and sheriffs and so i think that's a, a very realistic thing to ask for and my understanding is that the new sheriff, uh, Christy Corpus, is, at, is fine with this, and welcomes it, in fact, because she's trying to improve the relationships between residents and her sheriffs. Um, and then the committee continues at work once the new sheriff takes office. Um, so I don't see a lot that needs to be changed unless we wanted the council to encourage the, the supervisors to do this without so much emphasis on fixing San Mateo. Um, but I think that group is a, very, is a strong advocacy group in a way that if we had you know, staff and manpower, <laughs> we might aspire to be, and, and we're not because we're just uh, you know, volunteers who do what we do. Um, well, and they're, you know, they're a single issue group so that they're, right. you know, they're focused on that. It does ask us to fill in a reason. The last paragraph is in support of civilian right, right. in San Mateo County because I think we can, can say, uh, you know, concerns, uh, uh, existing concerns about um, the effective and I don't want to say compassionate, that's not what I want, but equitable, right. effective and equitable uh, policing. Right. And of course- it's Long overdue, it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to put his long overdue in yes. there somewhere. And, and, and because the sheriff is, you know, our, our police department. Right. So, so, uh, so Judy, uh, if you uh, stop sharing, I can share my screen, I have it up. Okay, let's see, stop, share, boom. Hold on one second, sorry about that. Wrong screen, there we go. So John, while he's figuring this out, John and Marianne, what do you think in terms of how, you know, what would be best way to have it come to you? First of all, if you want it to come to a council meeting, you have to wait till the 26th because tomorrow you can't get it on tomorrow's, right? Right, right. And um, the supervisors are talking about this on November 1st. Yeah, right. So 
you would need to prove this tonight and right. send it to Melissa to include in the agenda. And ask her to put it on the next agenda, right. I think that, I mean, if you look at the website, they have a lot of um, formidable endorsements. They've got Jackie Spear, they've got Anna Eshu, they've got Josh and Mark, um, they've got tons of council members. And I know, as Judy mentioned, that Christina will be open to this. She believes that there should be a civilian oversight committee of the sheriff's department, which Carlos Bolanos did not believe in. So it doesn't seem like it would be that hard for the council to endorse this. What do you think, John? Yeah, I agree. I, I, my, only, my only question is, is as it relates to fixing San Mateo. And I, if there's enough information, I mean, I know that we've had the presentation at the council as well. So I, I, it shouldn't be a problem, but that's the only flag to come up. Uh -huh. Um, normally, a, a letter like this would be drafted by the staff uh, and the mayor and done under the mayor's name. Um, but we have done this sort of thing before as a, the entire council. So I think it's I, I think it's fine. I think it ought, you ought to go ahead. Has to be approved by the council before it can go out under the mayor's name, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. and it should. I, I think it definitely should come from the town rather than just. Our committee. I do too. So Anand, I, I think you're writing a letter to the council and I, I would, I think it would make more sense to, to be drafting the letter that the council would be sending to, um, to the, to the board of supervisors, because otherwise we're asking that. Yeah. So that you, we, we use exactly, exactly. Okay. Do we want to add the reason here? Right. Yep. Kristen, do you remember what you said? <laughs> well, because I, I, I guess we should start out with the fact that the that the um, that we depend that the town depends on the sheriff for our policing, for all of our policing. And, uh, and we think it's extremely important and long overdue to have uh, citizen oversight of, uh, to assure that we have effective and equitable uh, policing. Equitable and? Effective. Effective. Policing. Okay. Uh, as far as this... I wonder if we can, while Adnan's doing that, thank you. Um, first of all, any changes to the reason? All right. I would, I would change. I'd go back up to the top, and um, and in subject line, I think I might. Uh, before you write this out, let me see what people think. But I think it would be nicer to say to have it just say uh, request to pass ordinance, and then and then the fix in San Mateo is in the body, but it's not emphasized so much that I don't I don't want us to just to be shilling for fix in San Mateo. I want them to pass the ordinance. <laughs> And right. then this includes uh, having participation by fixing San Mateo. But um, I think the main thing that we're requesting is to move on this and actually create this um, oversight committee. Yeah, if I can comment on that, I think the first paragraph there where they're saying they want to hold the study session and organize it and be the presenters and be on the committee. That's a nice wish list, but I don't know why we need to go that far. Um, um, 
Um, I'm also a little concerned about passing something by the end of the year. Um, what are they going to pass by the end of the year? The new sheriff won't even be able to comment on it. But um, well, um, it's true. It just creates a civilian oversight board. I think if they want to do that, they should do that. Everybody should be moving to do that. I believe that she's involved, you know, that she's made some comments or had some interaction with the board of supervisors around this. But I agree with, uh, I agree um, very much with Andrew that um, if we look at that first paragraph, it might, um, if you could scroll down just a little bit, and then, yeah, uh, that it, ours might say, uh, be included on the committee, period. <laughs> and involved in, and involved in the study session. Uh, well, they are going to be involved. They, I mean, they go to the study it's, session. Anybody can go to this. You and I can go to the study session. Oh, so I they see. will okay. be. They yeah. don't need to. They don't need to plan okay. the study session. I would just put a period there, and mm, leave out fine. that. Just uh, yeah, yeah. Cut this out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't mind if they organize a study session. I just think having them be on the committee organizing and presenting all that's like a, a lot yeah yeah <laughs> they ought to pick one right <laughs> maybe well, two yeah it, that's their wish list we don't and and they'll be presenting that we don't right. need to get yeah. that right. involved um, i don't think so this is coming from the town so we should make everything should be i rather than we right no, I think it should be we, shouldn't it? Yeah, it, it should be, be we. We, the council. Oh, it comes, no, it comes to the mayor, sends these out and signs them, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So, it so should I think be it's the I mayor. as the mayor. But doesn't, right. but doesn't he sign it on behalf of the council? He does, but it's still him. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe yeah. just signs it. Maybe you should say we. What What do the council members say? Think? I think we could let the city council figure out what. Yeah. Stuff like that. <laughs> I, I, yeah, because I'm sure that staff will want to look at this before it actually goes out anyway. Um, Perfect. So should I? So then the other thing would be: Would it make sense to have the first paragraph be the last bullet read in the first, so that's not so much same thing, not so much emphasis on Fix and San Mateo, and more emphasis on th that we want them to do this, create this oversight office. Board. I don't think it matters think, that much. I, no, I think actually sequentially it makes sense to have that first because that re refers to the committee to look at oversight and the study section on November 4, 1st. Okay. So that's so, uh, that's the first thing to happen. How about we, um, I'm looking at the time, so I want to move us along. Um, how about we have a motion to approve this? I'll move to approve it. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, let's do a roll call. Kirsten? Yes. Adnan? Yes. Judy? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Lucy? Yes. And Kim? Yes. Okay, great. So they well, also had there that was also a Sorry. resolution that I, I think we should not do. I think the letter will suffice and the resolution would be overkill. So Can was someone... this in the agenda? Did all public get to read this? This, as I said, when I started, I didn't get the information in time to get it in the agenda packet which is why we have screen shared it tonight so that you could see it since you're with us. And there's nobody on the phone attending who cannot see it. So I believe we are in compliance. I would have sent it out in the agenda packet if I possibly could have, but I didn't get well, it. Well, I think it's a good thing. I just want to make sure that it gets into the minutes. Of course, it'll be in the minutes. Right. Well, well, the minutes a lot of times shows up very late sometimes. So I don't know about late. I can't speak to the timing of minutes because I'm not the one who takes them or, or knows what happens after that. But I can assure you that you know this will be 
We'll just make the, sure it's it's the whole out. thing. So <laughs> you see, right? I don't you see you're able. You can capture this and put it as I the, can, but not the rest of Portola Valley. So, but it will also right. no. it will appear in the in the agenda for the uh, town council meeting. We'll have to approve them. No. We'll have to approve these minutes next time anyway. So this will appear in the minutes that we have to approve the following time that we meet. Right, and, and it will be, it. It, it will be it in all, full in the minutes. But it will also be in full in the agenda for the town council meeting before it's acted on by the right. town council. Right. And, and a point of clarification on things as well. This meeting is being recorded. Are these recordings available anywhere? I think they are. I don't know. I think it would be good to find out how and where they are because since it is being recorded it would make sense for the recordings to be available that way folks will be able to see everything in the recording as well well th yeah yeah they'll be able to hear the whole discussion but but this the, the whole, video is being recorded too so this they'll yeah, be able to see this as the well the whole piece right. that we approve should be in the minutes it shouldn't just say we approved a letter to you know da da da. It should say this letter and have the and have the right. the whole thing there. So they're meaningful minutes. Okay. Well, we have a we have a motion and a second, and we voted. And we voted, we voted already. All right. Good. We Ooh, voted. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, and I will get that um, oh, add on to the question to um, Melissa. I will. Uh, I will create a PDF of this and send it to you, Kim. Could someone please oh, right. remind me who motioned and seconded just now? I motioned. I second. Thanks. <laughs> right, right, and I'm, I don't you want to send, um, gonna... send the, the PDF to um, Lucy so she can get it in the minutes because Lucy's doing the minutes. All right, um, I'm going to skip the land acknowledgement that can wait. Um, are there any urgent subcommittee reviews or way over time tonight? I'd like the names of the different tribes or the different organizations that we that you mentioned. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by you'd like them. Do you? Um, you went well i was expecting it later in the agenda and you did it early and then you uh, the agenda did not list the different organizations that you are recognizing so i would like um, to the committee already, we already you approved them but you said them verbally, but i never never got to see them in writing you can come to the town council meeting tomorrow night and see if they approve our, our, we've already put in a memo to that. So it's in the town council agenda for tomorrow night. The three different organizations. The, the revised, our letter to the town council, which this committee approved and um, a revised land acknowledgement statement, which is the one that I read. And it should be in our old minutes also. Yeah, definitely. It, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you didn't describe each organization in your agenda. So people that come in later don't really, can't catch up. So, so okay. that was the Miwaka and two- Mawekma. Mawekma. And what else? Ramatish Ohlone and Tamian Nation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, I move that we um, adjourn the meeting. And the next meeting. Thank you. All right, good night, everybody. And the next meeting is uh, at seven o'clock, right? <laughs> no, it's at 6.30. 6 it should be 6.30. 6 that is. Because, yeah, the agenda says seven. Yep. Okay, so I'll have to get change that. Um, it should be 6.30. 6.30, okay. Yeah. With the town website says 6.30 for all of our upcoming meetings. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay, Good, thank night. You. Good night. Good night.